Hey, Deep Fat fans. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. To the Deep Fat Fried Christmas Special. Got my non-alcoholic eggnog. Got my delicious Christmas cookies. Boy, I sure am excited mm. for this special. Aren't you, TJ? Me too. Yes, I am, Scotty. <laughs> yes, I am. Hey, where's Paul? Uh, where is he? Paul? Paul! Why isn't Paul here? It's not Christmas without Paul. Hey, you know what? Let's not let it get our spirits down. I'm sure Paul's going to be here shortly. In the meantime, why don't we watch uh, me, the greatest... <laughs> I'm just joking, Scotty. We all know you're great too, buddy. Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Let's watch me analyze the Christmas Carol films. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is probably the most famous Christmas story ever. And maybe the one about Jesus being born in the manger is a little more famous, but it certainly doesn't have as many film adaptations. There are so many versions of A Christmas Carol adapted to the big and small screen, it's insane. And it shows that this story really resonates with people on a deep level when they're coming back for more constantly. Give me another version, give me another version. To find out why, I decided to watch as many different versions as I could this year, as well as read the novella they're all based on. I didn't watch nearly as many as I'd hoped, but I did find the time to read the novella, and I enjoyed it immensely. It had more humor than I thought it would, and Charles Dickens' voice is so strong uh, that the writer himself is kind of like a character in the book. Uh, not in the sense that he's walking around in the book, interacting with the other characters, but in the sense that you strongly feel his presence and personality in the narration. And it's a very warm and likable presence. Uh, if, if most of the film versions are missing something, it's probably that Dickens presence um, as a narrator, but, but uh, you know, we can't hold that against them. It's not like they can go dig him up and reanimate his corpse or something. The story, if you somehow don't know, concerns a greedy and miserly businessman named Ebenezer Scrooge. He's stingy, uncharitable, and despises the entire Christmas season. But his outlook is changed when he's visited by how many ghosts? Four ghosts, remember? Because the first ghost that visits him is the ghost of his business partner, Jacob Marley. Then it's the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. Uh, the things that these ghosts show him cause a dramatic and fundamental shift in the way that Scrooge sees the world and himself and, of course, the holiday of Christmas. So let me first of all tell you what versions of the film I watched this year. I watched A Muppet Christmas Carol with Michael Caine, uh, Disney's A Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey, Scrooged with Bill Murray, Mickey's Christmas Carol, uh, the 1984 Christmas Carol with George C. Scott, and 1951's Scrooge with Alistair Sim. So that's six versions out of seemingly 600, so I wouldn't blame you if you found this uh, whole examination woefully incomplete. But I still feel like I have enough to say to make it worth saying. So let's start with the version I'm the most familiar with, uh, it being the version I grew up with and saw the most, uh, A Muppet Christmas Carol. A common criticism of this adaptation is that Michael Caine seems to phone in his performance and uh, that much of the time you'll catch him with a blank expression on his face like he just took a bunch of Valium or something. Uh, I find this criticism to be a little bit unfair I mean, he may not be the best Ebenezer Scrooge, but I find his performance effective. I think it falls a little short of what you might expect from an acclaimed actor like Michael Caine, but I mean, it's a movie where he's acting alongside puppets. I mean, sorry, Muppets. So he might not have uh, been taking the whole thing very seriously is all I'm saying. I think if there's criticism to be made of Caine Scrooge that it doesn't really take a lot of risks with the role. Uh, when he needs to be mean, he's just over-the-top mean guy. When he needs to show that his icy heart is melting a bit, you get the famous Michael Caine teary eye face. When he's supposed to be a changed man, he's just the over-the-top good guy counterpart to the over-the-top mean guy that he was earlier. You still get that Michael Caine gravitas that he naturally exudes, but he plays the role straight up, not doing any more with it than the bare minimum to tell the story. This makes him a serviceable Scrooge, but not a great one. And you just get the feeling that a man of his talents could have done so much more with the role. 
My favorite part of A Muppet Christmas Carol is the ghost of Jacob Marley, whose visit tends to be my least favorite part in other versions. Instead of just Jacob Marley, the Muppets envision two Marleys, a pair of brothers, Jacob and Robert Marley, played by Statler and Waldorf, the heckling Muppets who are always just the fucking best. But the reason they're great here is not because of their usual heckling shtick, although they do do some of that, they, but it's because they sing an amazingly catchy song with surprisingly dark and ominous lyrics. Doom Scrooge, you're doomed for all time. Your future is a horror story written by your crime. Compare that to the Jacob Marley of the 1951 version, who I can just not take the least bit seriously. He's not ominous, he's goofy. <laughs> He's actually more goofy than Goofy's version from Mickey's Christmas Carol. By the way, who thought that the role of Jacob Marley was right for Goofy? I know it's a cartoon and I should suspend my disbelief, but it's just hard for me to see Goofy as a cutthroat businessman who is shackled forever in the afterlife by the chains of avarice that he forged in life. Whatever, I'm getting a little off track. The Muppets Christmas Carol, as I said, is the one I grew up on, and even though I can see as an adult that it has some flaws, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I like the songs, I like the designs, I even like Michael Caine's Paint by Numbers Scrooge, especially when he just loses his shit and starts yelling at people. And I think forgiving Michael Caine is a bit easier after watching the 2009 abomination that is Disney's A Christmas Carol, starring Jim Carrey and directed by Robert Zemeckis. I really hate this version. The motion capture CG animation that Zemeckis is for some ungodly reason obsessed with can actually work for me in the right story. I thought it worked okay for Beowulf because that was a high octane action movie where the characters not being constrained to mere human feats and movements actually serve the story in a meaningful way. But A Christmas Carol is not supposed to be a high octane thrill ride. And in some ways, that's what this version tries to be with lots of unnecessary action sequences that feel like a theme park ride at Universal Studios more than they feel like Charles Dickens' Christmas classic. The character designs are hideous and the ghost of Christmas past is some kind of joke. It's just Jim Carrey's head superimposed on a flame doing an impression of the Mr. Burns alien from The Simpsons. It's not charming, it's just weird and creepy, and I want it to go away. So does this version do anything right? Well, it sticks to the book pretty well. A lot of the film's dialogue, probably the majority, comes right from the quill of Charles Dickens, but once again, the fact that the words are coming out of uncanny valley demon puppets and not real flesh and blood human beings undercuts their weight a lot for me. In a story that's supposed to be so human and so warm and so inviting, these pseudo-human monstrosities take you right out of everything and just make you ask, why? Why does it have to be this way? Jim Carrey could probably have been a good Scrooge, maybe even a great one if he was playing it live action, but as it stands, I'd advise av avoiding this version like the plague. Although, I have to admit, there is one especially creepy scene that I really like, and that's the death of the ghost of Christmas Present. I've heard this scene criticized for being too gruesome for a kid's movie, but I think it's awesome. It's one of the few times that the visual style of the film actually works, because it's giving you something horrifying and intensely uncomfortable. That's the thing I don't get about this motion-captured CG trend that Zemeckis is trying to make happen. I think it would work so well in an outright horror movie. I mean, use this technology to adapt some Lovecraft or something. I think it'd be perfect. But for a heartwarming story like A Christmas Carol, it's just too ghoulish. And it can't pull off the mirthful and happy moments because they look just as scary as the dark and sinister moments. While we're talking about Disney adaptations, let's take a look at Mickey's Christmas Carol. First of all, why is it called that? I get that Mickey is a popular character, but he plays Bob Cratchit in this, hardly worth being the titular character. It looks gorgeous, and the dialogue is actually pretty funny and snappy in a lot of places, but wow, is this version too short. I really wish this was a feature-length film that could do the story justice, but to fit a 26-minute runtime, so much was cut that it just isn't paced right. And Scrooge's re redemption just doesn't work the way it should. Too many important pieces of the puzzle are cut out of the story and the narrative suffers as a result. 
I really do love Pete as the ghost of Christmas Future, the only version of the character I've seen actually speak. And his line is great. It says so much with so little, and it really drives one of the main points of the book home without needing to linger too long on it. Whose lonely grave is this? <gasps> Why yours, Ebenezer? The richest man in the cemetery! <laughs> Please! It's an effective shortcut, but there are too many shortcuts being used here. It may be a good enough version for kids, and I certainly liked it when I was growing up, but its appeal for grown-ups is probably going to be more about nostalgia than anything else. Before we address the two heavy hitters on this list, let's talk about Bill Murray's Scrooged. It's a modern retelling of A Christmas Carol, with a sleazy TV executive named Frank Cross serving as our Ebenezer Scrooge. It doesn't use much, if any, dialogue from the Dickens version, but it does do a good job of modernizing the narrative, and it can be really funny, if a bit less mirthful than other versions of the tale. Uh, I find that I really don't have much to say about it. It's not a bad take on the story, but it's not really a good one either. I think its real weakness is that it tries to force a love story that makes little to no sense. Frank is in love with a woman who is his polar opposite. She's charitable, loving, a good person who wants to make the world a better place. He's a total dickbag who treats everyone around him like garbage, and even though she sees him being callous and cruel to everybody else, she still stays interested in him. Um, if it was because she saw some glimmer of good in him, that might have worked, but the narrative never really gives us that. So she really just comes across as this good-hearted person who has an inexplicable soft spot for a total prick, and there's no real reason behind it other than the fact that they were in a relationship 10 years ago or something. Like I said, you could make that work, but here it just doesn't. Also, Frank's visit from the ghost of Christmas future is just bad. The vision he is shown makes no logical sense as an actual future. Uh, they seem more like hyperbolized nightmares that have little to no connection with the film's reality. In every other version of the story, the future Scrooge is shown by the ghost of Christmas future feels like a logical and natural conclusion of Scrooge's actions or inactions. Here, that's all lost, and it just cheapens the entire film by making the redemption arc of Frank Cross seem much too forced. Still, the movie has its charms, and it can definitely be a solid watch. Bill Murray is funny, the ghosts are funny, the criticisms of television as a medium are funny and still pretty on point, but it just doesn't stick the landing. And it works in a romantic plot that makes no sense and really grinds the whole thing to a halt. It's watchable, but it's not powerful. And A Christmas Carol should be powerful. The 1951 version called Scrooge or A Christmas Carol, depending on what release market you lived in, is a really good version of the story. In fact, many people consider it the definitive adaptation. Alistair Sim is praised by many as the best Scrooge, and I can see why. He plays the miserly Scrooge with a sort of inner sadness that makes him a sympathetic character from the get-go, even as he says and does terrible things. He plays Scrooge not as a powerful man who is just an irredeemable prick, but as a weak man who thinks he's powerful because he has money and authority, when in reality, he cannot see that he is a victim of his times and the life that he chose. It fits well with the themes of Dickens' book, and so, when the visitation of the spirits changes his character, it feels like the good person who was always inside of Scrooge is just finally coming to the surface. He is no longer shackled by the chains of greed, but now he's free to walk among his fellow man with a song in his heart and a lightness in his step. This version also follows the book very closely, and what it does embellish, it embellishes with purpose. For instance, it gives a much greater amount of backstory to Scrooge's sister, who's not even included in some versions. Here, it's presented as a big and important part of the redemption arc, and it really works. But if I'm honest, Sims's portrayal of Scrooge is not my favorite. His sympathetic Scrooge might ring more realistic than others in some sense, but to me, one of the greatest things about this story is that it redeems a man who seems beyond redemption. And to see that done effectively, I don't think there's a better version than the 1984 TV movie starring the legendary George C. Scott. Wow, is this movie good. I wish I'd seen it at a younger age instead of for the first time this year, but what a treat it was. Most actors play mean Scrooge as either just a prick or sort of a sad, repressed person like Alistair Sim. 
But George C. Scott plays Scrooge like a guy who's having the time of his life being an asshole. He seems to relish his own cruelty and take joy in raining on other people's parades. He's not suffering from the way he is, at least not on any visible surface level. He seems to outright enjoy being a miserly old jerk. And even as the spirits haunt him, he resists them, he argues with them, he tries to make a case for himself. Eventually, he gets worn down, but he doesn't go down without a fight. And really, it's only seeing how shabbily he will be remembered and how empty the end result of his life will be that finally convinces him to embrace a new outlook. That may be more cynical than other versions, but it's also a bit more believable for my money. I also really love Edward Woodward as the ghost of Christmas present in this one. He plays the role with a lot of sass and with more of a dark side than other actors who have played him with a more generic, jolly sort of disposition. I feel like Jim Carrey tried to pull that off as well, but he just sucked at it. Ultimately, of the versions I've seen, the George C. Scott one is my favorite. I can easily see Alistair Sims' version working better for a lot of people, and in fact, I know that it does. But for me, the fun of the story is seeing the convincing redemption of someone who seems irredeemable. And I haven't seen one do that better than the George C. Scott version. But there's another Christmas coming next year or so I hear, and maybe I'll look at some more versions of this classic tale and find yet more ways to interpret Christmas's favorite jerk, maybe second to the Grinch, another character botched by Jim Carrey, interestingly enough. Anyway, that's my take. Hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of the special. Sorry about that, guys. Jesus fucking Christ. Ho, ho, ho. The Christmas season is in full swing. That's all right, Paul. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Well, I wish I could say the same. I mean, I'm sorry to be fucking late for the show and shit, but everybody and their fucking mom and sister is Paul, out with their little shit Language, here. please. I'm sorry, there dude. There might be Christmas small show. Show. Ha, ha. Ho, ho, ho. I get it. You know what? You know what the Christmas spirit is out on the street, though, TJ? What's that? It's get the fuck out of my way. Me and my kids are trying to get to something right now, and I just had to weave my way through that shit that's to get not, here. That's not it at all, Paul. It's family spending time together enjoying the holidays. No, that's Give not what it spirit, is. You're the spirit, Paul. That yes, might be is, what Paul. it is on the TV, Scotty, but what it is out there on the streets is something fucking totally different. It's just You ugly. can't let that get you, you know down, Paul. Paul. You know? It doesn't have to be just on the TV. You know, you, right. you gotta cultivate that within yourself. <laughs> Whatever. You know? All right. Yeah, yeah. I've been cultivating it for 38 Paul. years. A seething rage has been building up into me. And I'm telling you, if you guys don't quit fucking with me on this, this might be the Christmas season that boils me over. No one's effing with you on this, Paul. We're just trying to get you into Paul, the Christmas spirit. For, 30, for 364 days a year, Paul, you're mad, you're upset, you're cynical, you're a pessimist. You can't just one day a year. You turn that frown upside down, put a spring in your step, and embrace Christmas time. And just try, Paul. Just try. I think someone needs a Christmas cookie, Paul. Come on. Come, come on, on, Paul. Come on. Come on, Paul. Save the eggnog, egg 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 too. Like, I love the fact that, like, a Christmas cookie becomes special around Christmas. Isn't that just a fucking sugar cookie? Like, can't you just go bake one of those anytime? Oh, a glass of milk becomes all fucking homey and Christmas. No, it's a glass of fucking milk. And no thank you. I, you know, I ate before I came, I guess. <laughs> I just feel so disappointed. We can't let our spirits You can't let Paul take... Look, we got an Ebenezer... Literally, we got an Ebenezer... Got a little bit of a Grinch here. Yeah. Hey, you Paul, know what? this is you your stocking. two had it good growing up. Couple of rich kids. But you don't know the real truth about Christmas. I learned it at an early age, though. Come on, Paul. Everyone loves Christmas presents, at least. Get, at least you can't even get in touch with that base consumerist love of Christmas. Something, something you liked, Paul. Oh, that's easy to say for a kid whose parents had it good. I guess it is. Christmas was tough times, lean times when I was a kid, TJ. What did you, well, what did you want, Paul? Like, What was the one present you really wanted growing up? What I wanted most of all was Mr. Bucket. These buckets, I remember that. Buckets, buckets of fun. fun, yeah. Buckets of fun, that's a great idea, We had idea, a Mr. Paul. Bucket. See, yeah. Paul, you're getting to the spirit. I saw a commercial for Mr. Bucket on TV, and I asked Santa Claus at the mall that year, Santa, could you please get me a Mr. Bucket? And I waited all year, and I was a good boy, too. Waited all year for Mr. Bucket to come, and wouldn't you know it, when I woke up on Christmas morning underneath the tree... There was a bucket-shaped present. Young Paul at Christmas time. 
peaches, quit fiddling with that. I got you, your damn Mr. Bucket. This, this isn't a Mr. Bucket. That's Mr. Bucket, all right. Why does he smell inside? Well, he used to hold fertilizer before he gave him to you, peaches. Merry Christmas, you little shit. But you can't even put your balls I in. I said Merry Goddamn Christmas. Thanks. And I, my little heart went aflutter, TJ. Almost jumped out of my chest. Because I thought it was Mr. Bucket. But when I opened it up, I found out it was Mr. Fuck It. A bootleg piece of shit. A bootleg of my dad. Bootleg Mr. Bucket? I don't bootleg. Somebody had taken like a magic marker and drawn some hideous face on it. Ever since then, TJ, hated this holiday. Hated the fakeness of it, just like the fakeness of that Mr. Bucket. And that's why, well, you're not going to catch me wearing a smile today during this fucking show. I'm here. I'll do it. But I'm not interested in all this fake mirth and shit. You guys keep it. Paul. It's never too late to embrace the true meaning of Christmas, Paul. All right. Well, you got a credit you, card? I hope, can, I hope you can find it in your heart to do that. No, it's not about credit cards, Paul. It's oh. not about buying gifts. It's about people coming together. Humanity and good cheer and goodwill for all, Paul. Oh, where's the good cheer? Where's the goodwill? All you know around what? you. You just don't choose to see it. You know what I think Paul needs, Scotty? A rousing Christmas song. I think you're right, TJ. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Ho, 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 Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Oh, Wasn't that a great song? One more time! Yeah! Rudolph the Red Nose Enough! 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 enough, enough. Okay, shiny nose. it's a shiny nose. I get it. He's a reindeer. And I get if it. you yeah. ever saw it, can we move on? Can we move on to something else, guys? Seriously, let me just hear you sing I mean, one verse of Rudolph. Then you would even say it glows. Yeah! Like Yay! Yeah. Oh, there you go. Even better. Good Yay. job, Paul. Yeah. Paul, you did a great job, buddy. You know what, Scotty? You know what I'm in the mood for? What's that, TJ? Ten fun Christmas facts! TJ, it just so happens that I have ten fun Christmas oh. facts! Yay! Oh. Oh, drink. Ten fun Christmas facts! So here's some of the best facts you can learn about Christmas, TJ. I am so excited right now. Brought to you by Wikipedia. Aren't you excited, Paul? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia the show, you guys! <laughs> <laughs> So, TJ, each year, wow. 30 to 35 million real Christmas trees are sold in the United States alone. Wow. There are 21,000 Christmas tree growers in the United States, and trees usually grow for about 15 years before they're sold. Oh, wow, weren't you guys just Isn't selling that me great, a, Paul? Weren't you guys just selling me a line of shit about how Christmas isn't about money? Why is your first fun Christmas fact about how much money people make on Christmas? What? Why is that? 
Well, I mean, how many Christmas trees are we selling? How many little trees many, are we chopping down families, so people can prop Paul, their corpses up in their house? Think flowers. about all of the families. The all the, the, the boys and all girls presents. getting presents under the tree because daddy or mommy sells trees. So you see, it all just builds up into the wonderful Christmas spirit. And capitalism is part of that spirit, Paul. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess I got nothing to add to that. Uh. Number two, Rudolph, the most famous reindeer of all. Remember him? <laughs> One Rudolph. more time, folks. Rudolph, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Stop. Can we what? just. We all know who Rudolph is, right? Ha ha ha. Yeah. He's okay. the most famous reindeer. Paul, I'm starting to think you're not really getting into the Christmas spirit, Oh, buddy. I'm way up in it. I'm all up in I'm right up the Christmas <laughs> spirit's ass right now. Whoa, Paul. I'm gonna watch that language. Rudolph, the most famous reindeer of all, was the product of Robert L. May's imagination in 1939. The copywriter wrote a poem about the reindeer to help lure customers into Montgomery Ward department store. <laughs> Well, fucking shock and surprise, fact number two is about how to funnel more empty-eyed morons into the fucking mall to buy more shit. <laughs> Whoa, Paul. <coughs> empty-eyed morons are people who are getting into the spirit. Who want to show their loved ones they care about them, the Paul. Spirit. Don't you guys think it's so great that something that started as just a cheap, exploitative commercial idea has become part of Christmas? <laughs> oh, yeah. Has been absorbed into jangle? the Christmas spirit. Oh, and yeah. Jangle? Into everyone's hearts, TJ. I tell you what, when I'm driving it's home, TJ, that. that's that, that, that. When I'm driving home, TJ, that's gonna be close to my heart tonight. As I'm weaving my way through the vacant-eyed zombie hordes of last-minute shoppers, you know, I'm really gonna be thinking about the Christmas spirit. <laughs> oh, I'm glad oh. to hear you say that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He is our resident Grinch, everybody. Like, you touched me and glitter is on me now. Like, this is Christmas. It's Christmas, Paul. Why are you covered in glitter? Because I'm so happy. Why are you both so smiling? Joy. Paul, it's the time of year. You have to embrace it, Paul. You have to... Paul, now, Paul, do you want to get on the naughty list? I'm already on that fucking list. Oh, I don't know about that, Paul. Oh. Let's hear some more facts. Yeah, I want to hear some more fun Christmas. What's going on back there? Ah, we have more facts! More facts! More facts! More facts! Santa brought us more Christmas facts. The gift facts. that keeps on giving, Paul, knowledge. Facts. Fact, yeah. Yeah. Number three. The image of Santa Claus flying his sleigh began in 1819 and was created by Washington Irving, the same author who dreamt up the headless horseman. <laughs> There's um, a macabre little detail for you, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe we ought to do a, some homage to him and, like, cut fucking Santa's head off and make him the headless slayman. Oh. How about that? Oh, that sounds that, gross. That, that image sounds like it oh, might be a little Oh, all of a sudden, this is too dark for, for you two, the edgiest people I know. I mean, come on. Get with it. Like, isn't uh, this the Christmas spirit? I can be edgy 364 days a year, but one day a year, I have to put that aside. Happy birthday, JC. Yeah, this is for you, buddy. You're on a first name basis with Christ now? Yeah, TJ, since, since, JC. Since when? Funny you mention that, TJ. Though Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ, there is no mention of December 25th in the Bible. Most historians believe he was actually born in the spring. Oh, you want to know what that is? That's because a bunch of people got together and had a bunch of pagans that were worshiping the winter solstice and decided, hey, we gotta inject some fake Jesus into that. So they shoveled a bunch of Christ onto an otherwise Christless holiday. Happy holidays, everybody. Well, Paul, and God bless them. Oh. Well, Paul, God. that was a bit of a rude interruption, but I forgive you, it's Christmas. It didn't become the official holiday until the third century. Some I think we need to get Paul some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> When is that a I wonder if they joke? make salt patch kids, TJ. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, salty. Yeah, 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 I get it. Man, what? I'm just filled with fucking mirth over this. <laughs> uh, next fact, Scotty. I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh, that's perfectly fine, TJ. I just know you're getting into Christmas I, you know, spirit. Firm handshake. From, uh, just so sorry well, for interrupting you earlier, Oh, Scotty. TJ, don't even think of so it. So sorry. Heavens, TJ, don't think of it at all. My bad. Did you're the fucking ahead. pod people come while I was gone? I'm sorry, Paul? Never mind. What's the next fact? Fact number five. You can thank Prince Albert for your Christmas tree. The origin of Christmas trees goes all the way back to ancient Egypt and Romans. Prince Albert? Who marked the winter solstice with evergreens as a reminder of spring. 
I mean, I don't mean to be the five-year-old in the room, but isn't that like a piercing through the head of your cock? <laughs> a great Paul, fact. I, I mean, <laughs> I've never heard of such a I, thing. But yeah. I do not judge others I'm for their decisions. Years. Yeah, I guess the bells were jingling well, as he Paul, walked around. Maybe, uh. maybe, maybe I can... Uh, <laughs> now you're getting in the spirit, I'm not really Paul. sure what Paul means, TJ. Uh, but it wasn't until Prince Albert of Germany, he was the leader of a country, Paul, introduced the tree to his new wife, Queen Victoria of England. He's also the leader of, a, of the and country. And that tradition took off. A drawing of the couple in front of a Christmas tree appeared in Illustrated London News back in 1848. And Royal Fever did its work. But I have one question, Scotty. What's that? Do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> <laughs> Good joke, TJ. I have heard that one in at least a day. Uh, it is rich. It never gets old either. It's always just as funny. Paul, I didn't hear you laugh. Or, Sorry, I, was, I, right? I got a good... You guys were just <coughs> laughing so loudly. Paul that laughs was, inside. Yeah, it was oh, drowned out. It was more out, of a you know. inside well, laugh. I'm starting inside. to... Um, it I warmed the cockles to... of his heart. Yeah. Give me another fact, though, because I think I'm starting to feel a little something that might be really? the Christmas spirit. That's yeah. great, Paul. Coca-Cola played a huge part in Santa's image. Who doesn't like Coke? Mm. Of course. Ice cold, refreshing Coca-Cola. According to Coca-Cola... Santa used to look a lot less jolly, even spooky. Oh no! Oh, I'm a spooky Santa! I'm starting to get scared now, Scotty. He still looks spooky. He still looks fucking spooky. Oh, He's a creepy old fucking freak in oh. a red suit that has kids that uh, give me your child and have it sit on my lap. That's not creepy to you. Paul, how about the real Santa? He used to be creepy. Paul, it's the real Santa we're talking about. Oh, I crawl down your chimney at night while you're asleep. It's like, fucking, how is that not creepy? Paul, language. Language, Paul. Wow. Wow. When the company hired an illustrator named Haddon Sunbloom in 1931 to create an image for Santa for magazine advertisements, the warm and friendly Santa we knew today was born. Wow. Well, la dee da. Yeah, man, and then immediately he gets plastered on the side of a Coke truck and becomes a monetized piece of worthless fucking shit that we all pretend we have good memories about. But really, it was just a lie that our parents told us, right? Paul, so yeah, what a great memory the magic, I got. The magic moments of childhood. Coca-Cola is a lie that our parents told Paul, us? Paul, aren't you ever a child, Paul, waiting patiently for it to be Christmas Eve so you go to bed and dream of your presents? And I thought that Santa would bring you something nice for Christmas. Yeah, I also used to Maybe go to something church. something good to eat. <coughs> We're not talking about that, Paul. Oh, yeah, we We're are. We're talking about... Oh, the night yeah, we are, Christmas. Scotty. We're talking the about night that. night before Christmas, Paul. Don't tell me you were never that boy. Because, Paul, I think we knew. We all know this. You were once that boy. Yeah, I was that boy that got a bucket with so a maybe, face drawn on well, it. Well, maybe, Paul, maybe you'll agree with this fact. Celebrating Christmas used to be illegal. Hey, a fact that Paul likes. Oh, give me well, a time lock me machine. Up. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you, Although two, you are too much. I don't even get this. Like, what is this? Paul, there's more this facts This is the learn. spirit of Christmas, Paul. Where's you Paul's sure you don't eggnog? want that Christmas cookie, Paul? Pass, thanks. How about some eggnog, Paul? Can we offer no, some eggnog? Oh, no, thank you. I'll just oh, excuse me, crack Paul. a raw egg in my mouth and swish it around if mm. I want to drink some eggnog. No, thank you. Ah, uh, that tastes like Miss Christmas me with to that. me. Although the Jamestown settlers created the first batch of eggnog, by, by the time the Puritans had settled Boston, Christmas was outlawed. And by the way, the word nog comes from the word grog, that is, any drink made with rum. From mm -hmm. 1659 to 1681, you'd face a fine for celebrating the once pagan day. And after the Revolutionary War, the new Congress found the day so unimportant that they held the first session on December 25th, 1789. It wasn't proclaimed a federal holiday for nearly another century. Wow. Um, yeah, give me a fucking time machine. Get me a DeLorean and let me hit the fucking six, whatever it is, 76 miles an hour, whatever it is, and I'm going back there. Outlaw this shit again, man. It sucks. It's 88 miles per hour and nice Back to the Future reference, Paul. Give me Paul, a fist you're bump, trying, buddy. buddy. Give me a fist bump. Yeah. Oh, look, Paul was wrong. Back to the Future. But that was a tried, great Paul. film, everybody. And if you've never seen you Back to the Future, go and watch that film. Next fact, Scotty. I think we have some more facts here, TJ. Oh, boy. Wow. Endless sack of facts down there, huh? Wow, this is a fun time here, TJ. 
People have to remember to be safe. Christmas decorating sends nearly 15,000 people to the ER each year. Thank wow. goodness. Bunch of fucking dumbasses. I can't think of a better Darwin Award to hand out than some fucking fat Midwestern fucking suburbanite falling off his roof trying to hang a big fucking gaudy ass no, that's reindeer not funny, up there or some that's, shit. People getting hurt is not funny. That's fun. not no, funny, it's funny to me. People getting injured I find during it hilarious. Christmas time You know what? That's the first thing, joke Paul. tonight that I would chuckle at if I hadn't been the one to tell it. Wow. From hanging lights on ladders Some people to taking the roast out of the oven. Wow, yeah. Making Mary can prove hazardous. In fact, the Consumer Product Safety Commission estimates that 14,700 people visit the hospital emergency rooms each November and December from holiday-related decorating accidents. To yeah. top it off, dry Christmas trees spark over about 100 fires, causing an average of 10 deaths and resulting in $15.7 in property damage. Sounds like poetic justice to me. Hey, we're a bunch of fucking hypocrites pretending to love everybody while we really hate everybody. Uh, oh, oh shit, my house burned down. The, the object of all my mirth and celebration became the fucking herald of my doom. <laughs> I drink those tears, sir. That's a great fact. It's a great fact that... I don't even know what to say about something like that, Paul, ladies and gentlemen. You're just a regular Scrooge for saying something like that. A Scrooge. What a nasty thing to say, Paul. Yeah, I think People Paul needs a visit lives. from the three spirits of Christmas past, present, and future to set him on the right path. I think you're right, TJ. Not to be judgmental around Christmas time, but you're really rejecting the Christmas spirit here, Paul. You know what? You guys can have those. Can you send me the spirit of titties and weed? I'll take that spirit to come visit me. And it doesn't have to wait till Christmas either. It can come year-round as far as I'm concerned. Wow. Wow. So, Paul, maybe that's not going to make cheer you up. Maybe you hear about how much giving is done during Christmas. Because you know what? A lot of people give. And can you say giving is a bad thing in itself? I mean, giving can be like a passive-aggressive thing, you know? Some people give gifts because they expect, like, emotional shit in return. Like, some people, like, this idea that everybody gives a gift and that's all that comes with it, it's bullshit. A lot of times these gifts are just like, hey, you haven't interacted with me for a while, so here's a bribe to make you feel sad about not coming around as much. Scotty, it's a very we... negative way to look at it, Paul. Scotty, right. I think Paul is, uh, he's dampening my Christmas spirit. I'm not... I'm not feeling as joyful as I was earlier. Well, Lottie, oh, is that reality knocking at the door of your tiny little pea brain? Give me today? another Christmas fact, Scotty. I, I need it. I need it bad. Candy canes got their start in Germany. The National Confectioners Association says a choir master originally gave the candies to young children so they'd stay quiet during long church services. Well. But when, the, when a German-Swedish immigrant decorated the street with candy canes in 1847... They became a popular as uh, Christmas candy. Wow! So it just kind of started off as something to, you know, get the kids to sit through that long church service. You know, know what? Kids can Maybe be. Paul needs a candy cane. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, would you like a candy cane? You know what? I think it's funny that the candy cane, another great symbol of Christmas, was invented by those goose stepping, jack boot wearing Nazis, huh? Uh, of course they invented it. Oh. What, what are we going to do to keep these children quiet? Stuff their mouths filled with candies. They said 1847, Paul. That's long before the Nazis even existed. Oh, you think that ideology just appeared with the Nazis? Come on, man. Those Germans have always been that way. Wow. Wow, Paul. In fact, isn't Santa Claus, isn't that German I mean, as well? Yes. Huh, another fucking Nazi. Why do they all love red? Why do Santa and the Nazis like love the same colors? Get with it, TJ. Wake the fuck up. That must be a coincidence, Paul, because Santa's the best person that you could ever imagine. Oh, yeah. I'm you know, sure he doesn't wonderful. deliver presents to the Jewish children. <laughs> yeah, what a piece of shit. Um, well, moving on to our 11th fact. The cost of Christmas gifts in 2018. According to a study performed by the National Retail Federation, Americans will be spending more money on gifts in 2018 than they did last year. Gallup reports that U.S. adults estimate they will spend approximately $885 on gifts this year. That's a lot of giving. Oh, yeah. Americans will spend about $720 <coughs> billion on Christmas. Wow. Wow! Yay, America! The emotional... I am so happy that we live in a nation so rich and so prosperous that the average person can afford to spend that much giving gifts How to their family that, for Paul? Christmas. 
You oh. can't be sad about that now, can you? Is that how we're going to spin this? Well, how are you feeling now, Paul? Are you feeling any better now well, that you learned Scotty's glorious Christmas facts? Um, yeah, yeah. I think we all learned some great facts about how Christmas is a commercial we and did. exploited of holiday. Whoa, we whoa, sure whoa, did, whoa. didn't we? <sighs> we sure did. A wonderful and magical Isn't holiday. Is that what I said? The origins of Christmas. That's not what you said. That's not what I said. That's not what you said. How about we what learn a about, we have hey, here, Scotty? How about we learn about the origins of Christmas, huh? Oh, please, TJ, please, can we learn about it? Can we? Can we? We sure can. Huh. Christmas is both a sacred religious holiday, praise JC, and a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon, just like you were talking about, Paul. The commercial side of Christmas, just as beautiful. For two millennia, people around the world have been observing it with traditions and practices that are both religious and secular in nature. Wait a second, TJ. It predates everything you even said was wrong with Christmas, Paul. Yeah, well, because the things that I say that are wrong with Christmas predate Christmas. Greed, avarice, self-interest, commercialism. I don't see it that way, Paul. I think people have been celebrating this for years because they see how special it is and how it brings people together. Christians celebrate... Celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one now. Christians celebrate Christmas Day as the anniversary of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth, a spiritual leader whose teachings form the basis of their religion. Citatious... Wait, wait. Citatious, Citatious needed. Never mind. <laughs> what Never a good mind. joke, Paul. Never Popular mind. customs include exchanging gifts, decorating Christmas tree, attending church, sharing meals with family and friends, and of course, waiting for Santa Claus to arrive. Wow. December 25th, Christmas Day, has been a federal holiday in the United States since 1870. Uh, the middle of winter has long been a time of celebration around the world. Centuries before the arrival of the man called Jesus, early Europeans celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of winter. Many peoples rejoiced the winter solstice, when the worst of the winter was behind them and they could look forward to longer days and extended hours of sunlight. Me thag, me no understand science. Me need stupid fairy tale to fill in gaps in knowledge. What do? I mean, come on, man. Well, how did they criticize them? Those people didn't know any better. It was, oh, they it was didn't about know time. Any... That's the point. It was a time where people came together, Paul. It was a time where people renewed the bonds of friendship and of love and of... Everything that this season represents, it was going to be a long winter, but they knew spring was right around the corner. Yeah, okay. The light was there, Paul. They just had to see it. And coming together, people saw that. Oh, yeah? Is that what, the, is that, is that what well, all this we is about? We made it here today, Paul. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. All right, well, well let's what get it, to the light at the end of the tunnel. What it originally was about, in Rome, where winters were not as harsh as those in the far north, Saturnalia a holiday in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture, was celebrated. Now, th that one was probably cool, because the Romans, you know, they like to fuck a lot and do a lot of sexual... I don't uh, believe so, Paul. Uh, sacrifice. What? I actually Paul, don't believe Paul, so, Paul. Paul, I don't think it's a really appropriate... Saturnalia probably, like, had big titty bitches. Whoa, 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 Paul, 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 running please. Running around the street like... Oh, would you like a grape? Paul, like, please. well, yes, I would. Paul, please. Paul, Beginning please. in the week leading up to the winter solstice and continuing for a month, Saturnalia was a hedonistic time... Yeah, that's what I guess I guess Paul was right. I'm I think they right. meant. I think you know, I think they meant indulgent almost. Right, like hedonistic. Like I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna have a lot of sweets. Sweets. Like indulging my dick into some chick's <laughs> pussy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Paul. Mm. Sometimes I know why I keep you around because you just make me smile so much. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. That Paul, for a month, slaves would become masters. Peasants were in command of the city. Kinky. Businesses and schools were closed so that everyone could join in the fun. Wow. That doesn't sound so bad, does it, Paul? Businesses closed, schools closed. Everyone is having a good time. You can't take issue with that now, can you? Sure I can. In the early years of Christianity, Easter was the main holiday. The birth of Jesus was not celebrated. In the 4th century, church officials decided to institute the birth of Jesus as a holiday. Unfortunately, the Bible does not mention the date of his birth, a fact Puritans later pointed out in order to deny the legitimacy of the celebration. I was about to call them 
Politans! Aren't they <laughs> skipping a step there? How about pointing out the fact that his birthday jumps around to deny the legitimacy of him existing ever? How about that? No, that's a... I'm not really... Too big really, leap of uh, I don't, logic. I don't, I don't follow, been, Paul. I don't really, you don't follow? It doesn't okay. make any sense. I didn't figure. Ooh. Was this dumb day? I thought it was Christmas day, not stupid day. <laughs> oh, you. Paul says the darndest thing. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be popularly embraced. So it was a marketing decision, Paul. Shock and surprise, TJ. But the spirit of it remains the same, Paul. They were wanting to celebrate the birth it was of about Lord taking, Savior. It was about taking a, a vaunted cultural tradition and adapting it to a new culture, Paul. Oh. It was about taking out your wallet and opening it up and taking the money out of it and giving it to somebody else in lieu of caring for oh, your friends. Oh, I, I thought you were I thought you were giving yeah. it to us. I thought it was your Christmas present. Well, at this point, I guess it was more about opening your wallet up and giving it to that church who, thank you, church, for letting us have this one day of celebration, by the way. I really but really, our modern interpretation of the holiday comes more from a Christmas carol. Also around this time, English author Charles Dickens created... Um, I what? gotta tell you guys, uh, I feel like, you know, we did a show, right? This is usually what we've, I, I, I told you guys I would come and do a show. I'm sorry I was late, but I have other shit. Like, honestly, are we just gonna go over the Christmas Carol I now? I mean, Paul, this is a... I think we need to hear story. about right, the Christmas Carol. I, I gotta tell you guys. It's a classic book, Paul. Okay, alright, fair enough. I'll listen a little bit. See, listen, the family was also becoming less disciplined and more sensitive to the emotional needs of children during the early 1800s. Christmas provided families with a day when they would lavish attention and gifts on their children without appearing to spoil them. You see? As Americans began to embrace Christmas as a perfect family holiday, old customs were unearthed. People looked towards recent immigrants and Catholic and Episcopalian churches to see how the day should be celebrated. In the next hundred years, Americans built a Christmas tradition all of their own. All right, all right, all right. Yay, yay, Merry Christmas, yay, everybody. Yay, yay. Yeah. All right, all right. Merry Christmas. Spirit. Oh, uh, Merry spirit. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Paul. I tell you what, guys, I got to go. High five, I will Paul. see you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, you can't uh, go now, Paul. He's going no, I'm some done. eggnog, TJ. I'm done. Uh, have a good one, though. Yeah, I'll see what you, do you guys mean? next show. You're not just getting eggnog? No. Where, where are you going? Come back, No, Paul. Paul. Paul! No! Paul! Paul, why? Why? What's going on, TJ? I thought it was Christmas. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Paul, you're back! Paul! Paul! I, uh, sorry. Paul, you're back. Sorry, oh. I forgot my vape. What? Forgot my vape. <clears throat> uh, well, we're... we're... Bye. Okay. That's... Uh, uh, Christmas? I mean... I can't believe it, TJ. Do you think he's really gone? Seems that way. It really just puts a damper on my Christmas spirit. You know, I was really hoping to share the magic of Christmas with my good friend, Paul. All I wanted for Christmas, I didn't tell anyone this, TJ, was for Paul to be happy, for Paul to love Christmas. Wow. It's so powerful, Scotty. <laughs> it's the wrong hand, but okay. I just can't. Here you go. Oh, I'm you sorry, know what? I'm sorry, TJ. You know what? You know what? No. 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 Absolutely not. We're going to press on because that's what Christmas is all about. The world hits you. You got to just rise up and keep going with the Christmas spirit. You know what I think is going to turn us around, Scotty? What's that, TJ? A reading of Twas the Night Before Christmas, also known as A Visit from St. Nicholas. What a wonderful idea, TJ. Please, please read it, TJ. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house "'not a creature was stirring, not even, even a mouse. mouse.'" That's right. "'The stockings were hung from the chimney with care "'in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. "'The children were... "'Oh, my God.'" "'Oh, my God.'" "'Oh, oh, oh. oh. it's Santa Claus!' Oh, Santa. "'Santa! Oh, Santa! "'Please, oh. TJ, continue.'" Well, Santa, here's your cookies. Oh, ho, 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 ho. thank you so much. TJ, Santa likes my cookies. Oh. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, 
I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw open the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and a tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be Saint Nick. That's my favorite part. <laughs> More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, Blitzen. to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. <laughs> As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the courses they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each tiny hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were, all, clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to, to all, all a good, good night. night. Wow. Bravo, good TJ. job, TJ. Thank you, Sam. Wow, TJ. Bravo, thank TJ. you, Sam. Sam. Wow, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. You've grown since last time I saw you, both of you. <laughs> thank you, Santa. Oh. Could I just could I just shake your hand? Of course you could shake my hand. In oh. fact, if you'd like, Santa, <coughs> come and sit on Santa's lap. Oh, I don't know, Santa. I'm pretty big. I think come you should, on over TJ. Here, come you on. Tell Santa what you want for Christmas. No TJ. kid is too big to sit on Santa's lap. Oh, Santa, the only thing I want this Christmas is for my good friend Paul to find the Christmas spirit. Oh, we well... We want that more than anything, Santa. I want that for Paul, too, you know. I've been trying all these years. Uh, well, it's a tough wish, but we'll see what we can do, TJ. We'll Thank see you, what Santa. We can do. Santa. Thank you, Santa. You're, I know. You're the greatest. I know this might be breaking the rules, but if I could just have one thing for Christmas, and you take Paul off the naughty list and put him on the nice list, even if that means putting me on the naughty list and taking me off of the nice list. Wow. Wow, Scotty, that is a heartfelt thing, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Santa. I know you'll do what's right. So what else can Santa do for you this Christmas? Hmm. How much of that poem is true? Hmm. The only part about it that isn't true is the part where I... Lay the finger on the nose. I'm not sure where that came from. I can rise up the chimney at any point. So you don't do any sort of finger no, to nose No, I mean, things? sometimes if I know people are watching, I'll do it. Cause Just because the they... poem says you do it. Right, but there's no, you know, I'll magic. Say, <coughs> uh, do you slim up for summer, or is it year-round? I mean, because... I actually slim down for winter. During the oh. summer, Santa is at his largest and most resplendent because I'm... I'm eating all the food that I will need for Christmas Eve. So this is like you in working shape. Yes, this is me in tip-top form. <laughs> wow. Santa, when I was a kid, I, I sent you a lot of letters. Did you get those letters? Do you read the letters you get? I get every letter, and I read every letter. Wow. 
Wow, that's great. You know, another thing I was wondering about is Mrs. Claus. Hmm. You Ooh. know, we don't really hear a lot about Mrs. Claus. Is it like she wants her privacy or, uh, well, you know, why don't we know more about the woman behind the man? Well, TJ, you understand well that oftentimes the boisterous man is backed by a much stronger female presence. <laughs> the same is true for Mrs. Claus. Without her, Christmas wouldn't happen. You know what? Get over here, Chelsea. Come on. Come on over here. No, she won't come. She's too shy. Oh, Mrs. That's Claus okay. the same way, I'm sure. Wow. So, uh, same reindeer all this time. Is, is, I noticed Rudolph isn't in the poem. Now, is Rudolph an actual reindeer, or was that just, like we read earlier, a marketing thing? You know, uh, what's the deal with Rudolph? Yeah, what's, what happened with Rudolph? Rudolph was a reindeer, yes. He didn't have a shiny nose, though. He was a bit of a miscreant amongst the, the reindeer, and then wow. gained his reputation for having a red nose because he got in so many fights. Wow, that is crazy. Yes. You know, one thing I think no one ever asked Santa, and since we have the opportunity, I think we should. Santa, if you could have just one thing for Christmas, what would you want? Oh, well, you're right, Scotty. It's very rare for someone to ask Santa that question. But let me answer it this way. Every year, Santa gets exactly what he wants for Christmas. Because what I want for Christmas is a smile on the face of every boy and girl in the world, a present under the tree, and a stocking <coughs> filled with cheer. Wow, that's great. Well, I think Santa gets what he wants every year. <laughs> you know, Santa, I mean, I don't even really have any other questions. I just want to thank you for being here. I know you have a lot of presents to deliver, it being Christmas Eve and all. Oh, yes, look at the time, look oh. at the time. Well, I must be going, Scotty. But TJ. Thank you, Santa. What's going on? What's this? Oh, Santa. I don't need anything. It's fine. All right, fine then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Santa. Merry Christmas, Santa. Best of luck, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas. Wow. The Santa Claus here on our show, ladies and gentlemen. Talking about an exclusive interview, TJ. Wow. I mean, I could not think of a bigger star to have as a guest here on our show right now. Not Snoop Dogg, not anybody. In Santa fact, Claus, everybody. That was my number two wish for Christmas. All right, well, you know what? Here's another guest star. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here, Sal. It's fine. You can interrupt any shoot you want. Come on up. Come on up, buddy. Come on up here. He just wants some cookies, too. Come here, buddy. <laughs> here, you want a cookie? Come on. Come on up. It's Christmas. Say hi to the people. It's fine. You want that cookie, don't you? You want that cookie, don't you? Don't you want it? There you go. Merry buddy. Christmas, Salvador. Merry Christmas, Sal. Wow, wasn't that great? That was Santa so Claus. special. Wow. I can't believe you know I got to meet Santa. I, could we get a hug moment? Could we just get a hug? I don't know. Well, we did just meet Santa. Yeah, we I mean, Santa. 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 Merry Christmas, TJ. Merry Christmas, Scotty. I can't believe it. Yeah. Do you know what, though? Still wish Paul was here. You know it's what? It's really unfortunate Maybe. that he could. Hey! Paul! Paul's, Paul's back! back. Yes, Paul! Yay! 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 Paul's Yay! back! Yes, Paul! Yay! Yay! Paul! Hey, how's it going? It's going great, Paul. Uh -huh. You won't believe who was just here, Paul. Who was here? Santa Claus! No! The Santa, Santa, Santa no! was here! We interviewed Santa, dude! You're kidding! No, no Paul! For, for real! The, the real was Santa was here. here! Was he wearing a hat that looked something like... Something like that I right mean, there? Yes! Yeah, exactly yeah, like yeah. that. You stupid yeah. dupes. I was Santa. I didn't leave to go home. I left to change into a cheap-ass dime store Santa suit, and I came back in here, and you two idiots bought it hook, line, and sinker. You could have got the hat anywhere, Hook, Paul. line, and sinker. You know what, Paul? I don't believe you. Oh, uh, you don't Because I you. looked into Santa Claus's eyes, and I saw the spirit of Christmas. I heard oh. his chuckle. Was it this... Spirit of Christmas, TJ? Ho, ho, ho! Oh, little TJ. Is it you? Voice. You dupes, don't you see this is, this is all just bullshit. Christmas is meaningless. It's all meaningless bullshit. It's all stoop. Are you Paul? Yeah. I have something for you. Merry Christmas, Paul. Ho, 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 ho. Mr. Bucket? 
The real Mr. Bucket? Oh my god! It's Mr. Bucket! That's right, I'm Mr. Bucket. I'm Mr. Bucket. Toss your balls in my top, I'm Mr. Bucket. Out of my mouth, I will pop, I'm Mr. Bucket. We're all gonna run, I'm Mr. Bucket. The game's Mr. Bucket. The first to get their balls in, and Mr. Bucket wins, but look out, because the balls will pop out of his mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. The balls will out of my mouth, I'm Mr. Bucket. A ball is what I'm about, I'm Mr. Bucket. We're all gonna run, I'm Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket from Milton Bradley. That was awesome! Oh, yeah, dude! Yeah, Mr. I mean, that was fun, right? I put my balls in his mouth. You did! I'm Mr. Bucket! The buckets of fun! Yeah. See, you know? Yeah. Just because you're all grown up doesn't mean you can't still enjoy that childlike spirit of wonder. See, Paul? That Mr. Bucket brought in your life. Maybe it's a little late, but here he is! The promise fulfilled! I mean... Don't get me wrong, it was good fun playing with Mr. Bucket with you guys and all, but... I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a stupid piece of plastic, you know? Paul, no, well, no, no, Paul. It's not just a stupid piece of plastic. That's your childhood, Paul. Yeah. Those bad memories you had, Paul? Santa came. I know all those years ago, that you felt like maybe you were on the naughty list. But you know what, Paul? We talked to Santa and we asked him. And it might have just been you in disguise, or it might have been whatever. Maybe Santa, Santa was hurt working us. through you. You don't know. I think Santa hurt us, TJ. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he answered our wishes. And you know what? Maybe it didn't last the whole evening, but for at least a little while, least I just, saw you having fun. Even if it was I just saw you second. enjoying yourself. For at least that moment, you felt the spirit of Christmas. And unfortunately, that's about where we have to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching the Deep Fat Fried Christmas Special. You know what? Wait, 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 TJ. Um, I want to say something before we... Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Before we let everybody The floor go. is yours. Transformations like that of Ebenezer Scrooge speak to something in the human spirit. It's the idea that through supernatural intervention of ghosts and gods that we can be fundamentally changed, that the right path will be made as clear to us as the sun or the moon or the stars. Unfortunately, that's not the way of the world. We don't know what the right or wrong path could be. We don't even know if there is a right or wrong path. We have no wise guides or ghosts to guide us to what we seek, whether it be righteousness or redemption or happiness we have no ghost of christmas past only our biased and flawed human memories we have no ghost of christmas future only our hopes and dreams for what could be and we have no ghost of christmas present only our desire to make the present something special and unique and memorable the spirit of Christmas, beyond the commercialism and the gaudy decorations, is supposed to be about common humanity, about looking at strangers as your brothers and sisters and coming together to make yourself and everyone else merry. I am a cynic and I'm a pessimist. And in many ways, the spirit of Christmas makes me not more cheerful, but only more bitter. The idea that there could be this perfect version of everyone and that everyone could be focused on making each other happy only reminds me how short that we all fall of that ideal. To love everyone sounds nice on a superficial level, but in reality it's painful. If you love everyone, you experience their tragedy not from a cynical and detached perspective, but from a place that's very, very real. And yet, I'm never personally happier than during the times that I can make someone smile or laugh. Despite my own cynical perspective, it's in those moments where I can take away someone's pain for a little while. And maybe my own as well, that I'm the happiest. We can't be the Grinch or Ebenezer Scrooge. We can't expect the spirit of Christmas to wallop us like a like a hammer and change us into better people. The spirit of Christmas and, and that change has to come from within us. And that change comes at the price of pain 
sometimes very, very deep and very real pain. But in that moment, to make somebody else joyful, to bring someone else joy, to make them laugh, to make them smile, that price is worth it. That's why, even though I'm a cynic and a pessimist, and I'm going to stay one after this Christmas special is long over, I have no hesitation in wishing you and your family and everyone you know and love a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from all of us here at Pessimist Productions. Come on, guys. You know the words. <laughs> Follow along with us at home, too. It'll be fun. That'd be a jolly old time, Paul. I think so, too. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out. That's right. Out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yule tide gay. Merry Christmas, everyone! Oh, ho, 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 ho,